Hi everyone. Here we're going to look at the derivation of the mean and variance of a binomial distribution. Let's just recap the uh, what we know about a binomial. If x follows a binomial distribution with n number of trials and probability of success in each trial being p, then we know that the mean of the binomial is np and the variance of a binomial is np times 1 minus p or in school you might have seen this written down as np times q. Now that I'm going to talk about two ways of uh, proving this, the mean and the variance. One of those ways relies on the binomial being related to the Bernoulli and the other one is a direct proof where we use the formula for the expectation of a random variable. Okay, to tie the binomial in with the Bernoulli, let's just write down the features of a random variable that follows a binomial distribution. If x is the number of successes and we have that it's an n number of trials, each trial has one of two outcomes, the probability of success is fixed across trials, denote by p probability. The uh, outcomes there are independent. Now these four bullet points can be succinctly put as the sum of n independent Bernoulli trials is a binomial. Uh, so to repeat, it's not the four bullet points, it's the whole lot, right? So going from x is the number of successes all the way down to four bullet points. If all that holds, a succinct way of saying the whole lot up here about x is the same as saying that x is the sum of n independent Bernoulli trials. Knowing this, we'll be able to easily find the mean and the variance of a binomial. Now, recall a bit of revision that yi is Bernoulli with parameter p. Then, let's jump down here, that the mean of a Bernoulli is p and the variance of a Bernoulli is n times p. Now, a binomial in terms of a Bernoulli can be written like this. x is a binomial is equal to the sum of n independent Bernoulli distribution. So these yi's will also are independent. So x, which is binomial, is the because it is the sum of n independent Bernoulli trials denoted by these y's. So these each of these yi's they are Bernoulli with parameter p. So it's fixed because it doesn't depend on i. There are n number of observations and we're told that the yi is independent. Then, as I said before, then x will be binomial. The uh, expected value of x will be np, the variance of x will be np1 minus p, and we're going to prove that. Okay, let's talk about this proof. It's We need this equation which links the binomial x to the sum of independent Bernoulli's on the right-hand side. Okay, to find the mean of x, I take the expectation of the x, so I take the expectation of the stuff on the right hand side, that gives me this line. Now we know from the expectation operator that the expected value of a sum is the sum of the expectations. In other words, take the expectation through the brackets. So this is what we have. But let's look at this one. Expected value of y1, well that's, that's, that's saying what is the mean of a Bernoulli. Well we know that the mean of a Bernoulli is with parameter p is p, so there, p. Expected value of y2, well that's Bernoulli p, and so on. So add all those p's together, we've got np finished. So that's proved. Next, the variance. Use the variance rules this time. The variance of x, take the variance of the right-hand side, so the variance of the sum of the y's. Now thanks to the fact that yi's are independent, the covariances are all zero, so that the variance of a sum is equal to the sum of the variance. Now if I've lost you there, just go back uh, a few videos ago where I talk about the variance of x plus variance of y. Okay. Now what is the variance of y1? Well y1 is a Bernoulli and we know that um, the variance of uh, Bernoulli with parameter p is n times 1 minus p. So there it go. Same for y2 and same for pretty much all of them. 
add them all up, we get n p 1 minus p finished. So that was a very nice proof, but really needed uh, to link the binomial to the Bernoulli to do it. Suppose you know you're not interested to link the binomial to the Bernoulli. Let's do it direct. Well, how could we have done it directly? We could have done it directly using the formula for the expectations given here. Since x is discrete, we know the formula for the expectation in general is given by this. Now, what we do is substitute for p i, where the probabilities will be given by the binomial distribution. So that's this thing here, uh, where I've missed out uh, n minus x. Good job I did that. Spotted that. And then you can see dot, 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 dot. How many dots do I need? I made pages and pages of dots. I'll get to n times p, which is the answer. Clearly, this is going to be a lot more messy and it's going to take, uh, it's less neat. So, um, so there you go. So you can see why that if I can link the binomial to Bernoulli, that my proof is, my life is made much simpler, basically. So I've set out to achieve what I started to do. Um, but let's finish off by um, seeing if we can get something more out of these results. You know, what does it mean to say the expected value of x is np and the variance is np1 minus p? Well, recall that p is between 0 and 1. Let's look at what the mean and variance is in the extreme cases where p is 0 and when p is 1. When p is 0, the expected value of x is going to be n times p, which is n times 0, is 0. And the variance of x in that case, variance of x will be n times 0 times 1, so that's going to be 0. Now, what do, does that mean? Well, look, if p is 0, it means that each trial is all, it's going to be definitely a failure. So, if we have n of the number of those trials, what's the number we, ex, we, ex, we will we get uh, to be a success? None. So, that's what this is saying. It means on this is saying that uh, the expected value or the mean result of the binomial will be zero number of successes. Variance of x is zero. That means it tells me there is absolutely no variability uh, in this outcome, that x is zero. So in other words, x is zero with 100% certainty. p is one. We expect a similar result. So similar result. So expected value of x here will be n, because n times p is equal to n times one the variance of x will be 0. What does this mean? p is 1 means that each trial 100% certainty that it's a success. So if we add them all up, how many number of successes do we expect out of n trials? We expect n because it's 100% number of successes. The variance of x is 0 it means that there's absolutely that this uh, x is going to be equal to n um, of 100% chance there's no deviation from that any kind of uh, um, repeated sampling. Okay, I'm going to leave you with this question. For what value of p, which we know is between 0 and 1, is this variance of x maximized? Okay, you can think about it like this. So p is the thing that varies from 0 to 1. For each value of this p, you can plot a, on a graph here what's the value for variance of x given by here. All right, and you should be able to find uh, what the maximum value of variance of x is um, for a certain value of p. If you want a hint, note that uh, this expression here looks like a quadratic, doesn't it? Quadratic in p. Phew, so uh, finally done. So let's get out of here. So my name is Phil and I'm your statistics mentor.